Hello my friends, I am the Dungeon Tutor. Welcome. Today's video is an RPG a day video for day 14, 2024. And today's question is what is a role playing game with compelling characters? Now, I believe that any role playing game can have compelling characters. That's up to the game master or the players to create uh, characters that are compelling. No matter how bare bones the game is, you as a player or you as a game master might layer a lot of attention on characters and make them very compelling, very interesting, uh, because they're powerful, because they have uh, an interesting backstory, what have you. But in this, I'm going to go with a game that I have encountered, and I can't say I've even run it yet, but from what I've read of it, it looks like the characters are very dynamic and put into a position for the players to actually really care about them and relate to them in such a way that ordinarily anything taking on this particular angle might have a really hard time selling to players. This makes it all relatable. The game is called Part-Time Gods by Third Eye Games. And this particular game, which, again, it's weird. I, I do seem to like the weird games. But the idea for this is, th is, is simply this. Your character is a god. Okay, your character is a god. Small g god, but god nonetheless. You have a particular thing that you are the god over. And sometimes it might be something big like the sun or love. You know, things that people have had a need to slap onto a deity's responsibilities in the past. But in this particular game, it doesn't have to be that grandiose. Uh, one of the sample characters in here is a god of baristas. Yeah, it can be modern, it can be something that's universal, it, it doesn't, well, I, I'm not going to say it doesn't matter tremendously, but you can basically apply just about anything and become responsible for that as the god of that thing or state of being or, or whatever. That's cool, okay, that's, that's kind of neat. You do have powers, you do have things that you can do as a god, yes. But... Oftentimes, being a god sounds cool, right? You get to dwell in your lofty, uh, deific state and look down at the realm of mortals and decide the fate of things within your purview. That's not exactly how part-time gods go. Uh, first of all, you're hiding. There are forces that will kill gods and have killed gods. Um, you are not supremely powerful. Not even close. You may be powerful, you may be tough, and you may be able to fight against the darkness, but you are not omnipotent by any stretch, especially as a starting character. Eventually you can gain more power, but you're not going to be able to single-handedly stand against the darkness yourself. And you also have to understand that the moment you start flexing your abilities, that's when you're going to get attention of the bad kind. Now, to protect yourself, First of all, and this is the important part, the central element of part-time gods, you have a real life. You are disguised as a mortal. So you have a personality. You have bonds and tethers to the mortal world that you care about. They are your anchor. They are what give you a deeper well of fortitude and strength. Because you don't have the kind of power to just stand forward as a blazing beacon and take on all comers and save all the other gods. No, you can't do that. You need to anchor yourself. You need to ground yourself. And that involves taking on a job frequently, something that keeps your character employed, something that gives you ties to that world, a family, perhaps, ideally, if, if you want your maximum support, but not necessarily. You can get by with being a little bit more distant from humanity if you want. But by keeping these tethers, you make your character stronger yet, giving you wells of strength and, and, and discipline that you can use when you have to take on your role as a god, when you have to confront your enemy. And losing those is catastrophic. Absolutely devastating to a god to lose those tethers. Now, on top of that, uh, which basically t would almost turn this into a superhero game where you have a secret identity, in some ways, that's not too far off from the truth. But also, you have a pantheon. You have other gods that you are at least sociable with, even if you're not warmly friendly to them all. 
and they back you up. You protect each other because you need to. Again, you're on the defensive here. You are not the dominant force. So even if you are the god of war, and perhaps you are quite good at fighting, you're not so good that you can fight the darkness where it lives and breathes. All you can do is try to defend yourself in terms that are advantageous to you. It's interesting because you're trying to get stronger. You're trying to to grow as a deity and grow as a pantheon in, in, in respect. But you work together because you kind of need to. And even though they have their own interests, they have their own area of specialty, obviously, you somehow work together for the common good, which involves survival, big one, but also being able to have the freedom to exist without the fear looming over your heads because you know that the rest of the group has your back, or at least you hope they do. I mean, this, by a certain extent, is a very cooperative game, but just like any game that talks about the gray areas of the soul and, and, and humanity in general, there's a possibility that it could go horribly awry, sure, but in general, self-interest at the very least is going to keep people together in this kind of a game, which is, which is cool. And exploring those motivations and things of a, again, demigod or, or god that isn't necessarily omnipotent or omniscient, that's, that's, that's a lot to struggle against. That's a lot to think about. But could mean that that interaction between those gods could be very interesting. I mean, what is a lot of the myths that we have from earlier civilization, but ideas on how those different gods might have interplayed together and how their intercourse may have led to great amounts of phenomenon that occurred. That Well, of course that's how that geyser got there. Because the water god and the earth god got together and that's their offspring. Fair enough. Come for the role-playing game talk, leave for the dad jokes. So, that's my pick for this game, uh, Part-Time Gods. I do look forward to running this game in the next year and uh, then doing a full report on it. But the premise behind it is very, very invocative. And uh, I think the characters could be really compelling as you grasp at multiple motivations at the same time. And, you know, inevitably, perhaps you'll fail at some and suffer the consequences, but seeing your character grow in development and develop in that, that scenario seems like it could be very rewarding. So that's what's getting my pick for this particular video. I hope you liked it, and I do hope that you continue to keep coming for more of these fun little videos. And uh, yeah, if you like them enough, like, subscribe, comment would be great if you have a more uh, compelling game. That would be fantastic, especially if it's one I don't know about. I'd be very interested. But I do hope, more than anything, that I see you again, because I'm going to keep making these videos, and I hope to see you for them. So until that time and now, I hope that you, yes, you, get a chance to roll some dice, to play some games, to have some fun. But stay safe out there, my friends. Until that next time, farewell.